Nilesh Shah, Director with Access Direct also joins us. Nilesh, good morning and fantastic to have you back. Uh, Nilesh, uh, it's been a one-way street for Indian markets of late. Nifty has appreciated from levels of 5400 to levels of 6100. Uh, what's in store for us after this uh, majestic rally? I think uh, this rally is partly attributable to the fact that no one expected the rally to continue. No one expected market to recover. So clearly, market had a greater opportunity to make a comeback. But now, as we are reaching higher levels, there is a sense of optimism coming among investors. If we divide investors in global investors and local investors, clearly global investors are far more bullish on India than local investors. In some sense, they are finding Delhi better from their respective places than probably we are finding it better from our respective places. One interesting comment which a global fund manager made was that why are you worried about your environment? Look at what we have done to our country. And especially when a large powerhouse like US shuts down 18 times in the last 30 years or they raise their debt ceiling limits by 60 times in the last 80 years, clearly it shows that there are many other countries which are in far worse shape than we are. So all those things have resulted into this rally. And now we are reaching a stage where earnings should catch up. We'll have to wait and see how the second quarter results pan out. And probably there will be a phase of consolidation in the market around current level. And then based on the earnings momentum, we will see how the future of the market develops. Nilesh, but the fact of the matter is that earnings don't seem to be bottoming out anytime soon, barring a few odd pockets like IT, FMCG and the likes. Uh, how soon before we see the market again pick up its upward momentum? So one, the market's going to discount earnings which are probably six months ahead of its momentum. So we don't have to look at second quarter earnings, we'll have to probably look at first quarter F515 earnings. Second, within the market there is extreme polarization. The stocks in the sectors like technology, FMCG, pharma are at all-time high valuation. And the earning momentum there seems to be reasonably good. Of course, domestic pharma companies will see some slowdown in earnings momentum because of the new regulations. But bearing that temporary effect, at least the earning momentum for technology, pharma and FMCG seems to be on a pretty good mode. The other sectors like utility or infrastructure or engineering or uh, you know construction and real estate, oil and gas, I mean all those sectors are at bottom valuation. Many of those stocks are trading at lower than what was the valuation prevailing in October 08. So earnings expectation over there is very, very limited. And if there is some amount of catalyst for earning momentum over there over next three to six months, we will see some amount of consolidation and uptick opening over there. So earnings, effectively what's going to happen in first quarter F515 can support the prices today. Nilesh, but I just want to get to the point that you were making about the bipolar nature of the market. Do you think when it comes to IT that perhaps may be getting jeopardized given the way that IT actually saw a bout of profit taking coming in yesterday? Or would you say just was, you know, just a one-off move? I think some amount of uh, you know profit taking is inevitable, especially when stocks have rallied significantly in short period of time. Not so long ago, Infosys was trading at 2200 and today it is 3200. So it's quite likely that some people want to take the profit out. But the point I want to make on IT side is that one rupee, you know, notwithstanding its recent appreciation, has given a big boost to the IT sector. While there are concerns on the immigration bill. Recovery in the global market does give hope and you know, advantage to the Indian IT companies. More importantly, the lowest valued company in the FMCG sector today is trading at a higher valuation than the best IT company in the country. So clearly there is room for IT sector stocks to get re-rated even from current level. They are trading at all-time high prices almost but they are trading at a much lower valuation than their all-time high valuation. Nilesh, uh, so what to your mind is a deserving P multiple for large cap IT stocks? Uh, do you think uh, stocks like Infosys, TCS, Tech Mahindra, they could uh, trade at P multiples of 20 plus? 
I think there is a reasonable opportunity for them to trade around that level. One, it's a very high ROE generating businesses. And while, you know, some of these companies have cash balance, which kind of dilutes their overall ROE, but in terms of business ROE, they are generating as much ROE as some of the FMCG companies. And we all know how FMCG companies are trading. Even if I discount the brand value created by the FMCG companies, still, I think there is a reasonable opportunity for IT companies to get re-rated. Now, large cap IT companies are probably at the you know, higher end of the valuation today, but there is good opportunity in mid cap IT companies. The gap between the large cap and mid cap IT companies does provide some more opportunity on the mid cap IT side especially. So, Nilesh, let's Let's have, uh, you know, one more follow-up question on IT because that is the big talking point. Your take is that IT stocks could see a P, P expansion or P multiple expansion. IT companies are growing in the run rate of about 10 to 15 percent. So with a case of P expansion and underlying growth, do you think IT stocks would appreciate by about 35 to 40 percent? Uh, we have seen a big part of rally already happening in the IT sector. So I would have definitely said yes if this question was, was asked about say 4-5 months ago. Today to expect that kind of return might be difficult but in certain select mid cap IT companies both the equations in terms of PE expansion as well as earning expansion could be easily achieved and then they could result into that kind of price movement. Large cap IT companies will be just above market outperformance, but not as high as you are expecting. Mm. What about the other end of the market, the underperforming end, Nilesh? And like the point you were talking about, that if there is any spark of outperformance coming in there, you know, there is going to be no end to it. Uh, could we see any shining stars when it comes to the auto basket? Some decent performances from Bajaj Auto, Tata Motors' is global business as well seems to be turning around. I think we are going to see a market where quality is getting rewarded in last five years. We have seen stocks multiplying three times and seven times in quality baskets. Clearly this has come at the cost of let's say companies which were facing trouble on the debt side, companies which were facing trouble on the regulatory side. And those stocks have been kind of hammered out of shape. Now will quality continue to outperform the market or we will see some sort of revival action taken in you know kind of beaten out sectors and can then those stocks bounce up. We have seen stock like Bale giving 40% return in a very short period of time. My feeling is that going forward we are going to see more and more cases like Bale where stocks in the beaten down sector by virtue of certain actions taken to revive them either on the regulatory side, on the environment side or purely in the form of you know revival in the economy could give pretty high return, albeit from a very, very beaten down valuation. So I think investors will have no option but to create a portfolio where a larger portion is towards quality stocks, more focused on rupee depreciation theme like exports in technology, pharma kind of companies. There will be a little bit in the FMCG sector and a some amount of money needs to be allocated towards these beaten down sectors where revival action is being undertaken. You've talked about BHL. What about LNT? It's slated to come out with its earnings today. Could it do the trick? See, in LNT, probably it's the future outlook which is going to drive the market prices. Clearly, people are expecting year on year degrowth in the earnings, and that's been discounted into the price. So, what happens in terms of execution of their order book in the coming quarters? That's going to determine the, you know, market price of LNT. Mm. But Nilesh, do you think LNT could uh, struggle to keep up to its guidance? Uh, they've given a very tall commitment for FY14, order book growth of 20%, revenue growth of about 14 to 17%. If we see the order book positions across most infrastructure companies, one, there will be gravitation towards the blue chip construction companies and LNT is certainly one of them. Second, there could be bunched up orders also getting, you know, kind of launched because over the last 18 months we have seen sharp slowdown in the infrastructure projects. So 
if LNT is saying that they can expect a bumper order book in F514, that will be a function of one, gravitation to the blue chip construction companies, and second, release of the bunched up orders, release of the pent up demand in infrastructure projects. Malaysia, what on the bond market? Rupee has stabilized, equity markets are looking okay. But the bond yields are still moving in and around 8.5%. And it is often believed that the bond market is a very sophisticated market and bond tra traders are smart traders. Uh, well, as an ex-bond trader, I will agree to that. But the reality is that today the inflation numbers have been running a little bit higher than the expectations. And the trajectory of inflation numbers seems to be on the higher side. Now, there is a contradiction over there where the global food prices have started declining. Global food inflation is on the negative side, but the Indian food inflation is running at double-digit level. The consumer price inflation also has remained at elevated level for a long period of time. So both these things are kind of pushing bond markets to believe that RBI will hike repo rate towards the end of the month. And market yields today are reflecting that trend. My feeling is that as we move forward, there will be better liquidity either by way of term repo or by way of OMO or by way of FX flows, especially on FCNRB deposits which are coming into country. So liquidity will be reasonably good despite the festival season demand. Second, the gap between the repo rate and the MSF rate will continue to decline from current level of 150 basis point, which again will you know, kind of put a pressure on the market yields. And towards the year end, towards the financial year end, we will see yields declining from current level. So at current level of yield 8.6% and so, this is a good opportunity to invest in fixed income market. Some of the tax-free bond IPOs are providing fantastic return of opportunity. You don't get 8.92% on a tax-free bond in uh, you know, normal circumstances. So tax-free bonds also are providing great opportunity for investment today. Nilesh, so what is the right way to really approach this market? Should one buy this market on every decline with the assumption that the first of the economic print is behind us or uh, one should still be a seller on every uptick because we are nowhere close to an economic bottom? I think from an economic growth point of view, we will see a little bit of positive surprise from the current low expectations. We have seen IMF, World Bank reducing Indian growth estimates. We have seen so many street analysts reducing growth estimates. But we think, one, the recovery of monsoon will help rural economy and growth. The election spending will again support the economy. These two factors put together will see economy you know, kind of reviving. The festival season has taken off well. So festival season, monsoon, and the election spending, this should be supportive of economic growth from the current low level of expectations. This should help, you know, kind of stabilize the market. The real risk for the market will be the political events, and that's not yet kind of factored into the prices. Clearly, those things can create a volatility. The second thing is the, you know, global events. We have seen the U.S. debt situation kind of impacting markets worldwide and there's no permanent solution over there it's been just postponed into the next year beginning so we will see volatility in the market and investors can kind of you know park their money in quality stocks for a longer term horizon but certainly keep certain part of the portfolio more from a trading point of view where the correction gives an opportunity to enter and some amount of exuberism kind of gives an opportunity to exit Mm. Nilesh, so stick your neck out from now up until the calendar year end. Do you think the market could see significant highs from the current level or will we beat around in a range with 6100, 6150 being a ceiling? Uh, it's very, very difficult to predict the short end. But all I can say is that we are likely to see a volatile movement from here till year end in a probably narrow range rather than a steady upturn of what we saw in last, you know, one, one and a half month. I think the phase from undervaluation to fair valuation has been completed. And going forward, while economic growth will be supportive to the market, at some point of time, markets will start discounting the election 
and that's bound to create some amount of volatility, albeit in an arrow range in the market. Right, Nilesh, appreciate your time and uh, thank you for joining us.